High gears, low gears, fine tune gears. Well, this is the worst intro ever. Anyway, when should you use each SnowRunner gearbox and why? A Tribe Called Cars puts metal to the pet. No. <laughs> A Tribe Called Cars puts pedal to the metal to help. I've wanted to make a SnowRunner gears guide for a while, so here it is. Better late than never, hopefully. This is more for beginners, some of whom joined us at Christmas, hello! But might be worth a watch if you're a seasoned pro. Before that though, a quick word from our sponsor, which has nothing to do with Gears or SnowRunner, but is called BoostGaming.com and is the place to buy digital gaming currencies for PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo and more. Link in the description, use it if you buy anything, as it makes me look good. Anyway, if you learned to ride a bike as a kid, you will remember the basic principle. Smaller gears make it easier to go up hills, but reduce your top speed. Bigger gears do the opposite. But what about in SnowRunner? Well, without mods, you only have to worry about automatic gears, as in they will shift for you as you increase or decrease speed. Unless you use the clutch tap trick, which can let you go up or down gears faster, it's not especially involving. But each gearbox type has other gears, including H, L, and N. N stands for neutral and is for revving the lights. La 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 la. <laughs> revving the. N stands for neutral and is for revving at the lights to impress the ladies and coasting on fumes so we can forget that one. It should reduce fuel consumption than when in gear, but that is not the case. But it can help you achieve a higher top speed when yeeting downhill, should you wish to yeet downhill. You can achieve similarly crazy speeds by towing a trailer. H meanwhile is the high gear. This gives you a consistent and sometimes pretty rapid speed depending on the type of gearbox, engine size and wheel circumference. For making good progress in most conditions, H can work well, especially as fuel consumption is usually lower. H is useful if you want to cruise without your progress being affected by a gear change which would otherwise affect weight balance and slow you down. Going down to first on a steep hill, for example, is suboptimal. You lose momentum and it can be difficult to regain it. However, H is not the be all and end all gear selection, although in SnowRunner some trucks can make it work beautifully, the Tega King and Twin Steer 6900 being two obvious examples. Sometimes you will want more traction because in mud, H can dig itself a hole and get you very, very stuck. Also, lose too much momentum and your truck will stall until you swap to auto or low. This happens more easily if you damage your engine. Plus, with the high range gearbox, you only get one L gear, which can be slower and more limiting when off-road. H also means higher speeds, which means more damage from invisible pebbles and twigs. Honestly, there is this magical speed line where you go a little beyond it and suddenly wheels are falling off and the engine is on fire. L, meanwhile, is short for low or low range. This is the gear for maximizing traction and control. In the case of the Off-Road Advanced Special and SnowRunner Scout gearboxes, you get three different L gears. I think L minus, L and L plus. The L plus gear is a little slower than H. L has many uses, it can stop you from burying yourself in the mud, it can keep you from losing control during a tricky climb, and has a lower top speed than in automatic, which makes staying out of trouble a lot easier. After all, rushing is the true killer in SnowRunner. And like H, it provides a consistent speed. For me, if I'm pulling and or carrying cargo, I will take the off-road advanced special or SnowRunner Scout gearboxes. The three-speed control is really useful for maintaining traction, especially for trucks like the KRS-58 Bandit that suffer from wheel spin. The rule of thumb is that if you see wheel spin, you are wasting energy and fuel unnecessarily for no extra gain. In fact, it can harm progress as you dig yourself a hole. So drop down to the medium or slowest L gear. See if that helps. Usually it would be the same or sometimes faster. Rinse and repeat to ensure efficient progress. Then there's the new fine tune gearbox. This has an H gear for cruising, but the main purpose is for greater control than the off-road advanced special and SnowRunner Scout alternatives. 
Basically, the entire range between the bottom and top of the gear interface is usable. The closer to the top, the faster your truck will go, but the more likely it is to wheel spin. The lower, the slower. This provides you with far more control over your exact speed, and you can more accurately reduce wheel spin. Some trucks also have a choice between AWD and RWD. The latter, also known as rear wheel drive, is the dream for burnouts, donuts, and impressing girls even more. But when you need traction, having just two wheels being powered can reduce progress. In SnowRunner, a game filled with bad and usually slippery terrain, traction is king, and all-wheel drive, aka AWD, helps. People complain in Forza Horizon 4 that it's a way to cheese a car into awesomeness, and it really is. The same applies in SnowRunner. But all-wheel drive systems tend to weigh more, and turning four wheels instead of two can have its effect on fuel economy. This is partially the case in SnowRunner. You can easily see what gearbox is affected by switching in and out of all-wheel drive, and then look at your fuel consumption. Then there's diff lock. This ensures wheels will only spin at the same speed regardless of traction. This one stops one or more wheels from spinning endlessly while the others are stuck. You can only access diff lock, if a truck has it, when you have your truck in the low gear. Another reason why the off-road advanced special and SnowRunner Scout gearboxes are preferable more of the time than the high range. They're simply more versatile off-road. The minor downside of diff lock is that it can damage your truck if you forget to turn it off on easy terrain. But SnowRunner gives you a warning in the form of some pretty colours. Red. Bad. Given the benefit of all-wheel drive and diff lock, it's easy to see why trucks with both typically do best in SnowRunner. The Tega 6436, Azov 73210, Dan 96320, and so on. Having both also means you can use the high-range gearbox without as much of a penalty. The downside is that some of these trucks do make life a lot easier, too easy in fact, for some players. A Tega 6436 makes life a breeze in the early days of SnowRunner, and all the way to the end, actually. You may also want more involvement afforded by trucks that make one or both switchable, such as the all-terrain conquering Caterpillar 745C, which now has a log carrier add-on. Woohoo! Being able to switch all-wheel drive and diff lock off can reduce fuel consumption. So what about more advanced tips and tricks? Well, you can switch to H once moving and accelerate rapidly, then switch back to Auto for the fastest acceleration, and or do the clutch tap trick. Both make you considerably faster than if you let Auto do it um, automatically. You can also hold the handbrake and bury the accelerator, then release it for a bump. Some trucks can start moving again when stuck if you do this, or it can help you build up speed faster if you need a run up with limited space. Some people claim the use of N, for neutral, can boost your winch power. I tested this for a while, all trailers were reeled in at the same speed as when not in neutral. So no faster or no stronger, making this more of a placebo thing. The trick that does work is to use manual reverse for maximum traction because you can keep all-wheel drive and diff lock on if you do, as opposed to letting the auto gear select reverse. So when would you use auto? When craving the highest top speed, the high range box gives you eight gears and things really shift for the last two, particularly in a truck with big wheels and big power. In summary, H is for cruising and generally unintensive driving, but some trucks can make it work almost anywhere. Off-road, advanced special, fine tune and snow runner, meanwhile, are for when traction is necessary and are a good default option. As for standard gearboxes and rarer ones like the Archaic, these can lack an H gear and can be good on fuel, but I would recommend upgrading when you can. If you prioritize any upgrades in SnowRunner, make it engines, gearboxes, and all-wheel drive. MattRunner.info is a great resource for finding stuff. And that's it for this video, hopefully it helps newer players, and maybe some of you old veterans like me. Subscribe, like, and tell your cat about me, or perhaps you can drop some of your own gear-based wisdom in the comments. I shall see you in the next video. Take care, bye.